Hare Krishna, thank you for joining this morning, Shiva Bhaktam class and hopefully attentive Japa a bit later on. So we'll make a start. And uh, last couple of weeks we've been talking about the two questions that uh, Maharaj Prikshit had asked to Shukadeva Goswami and uh, Shukadeva Goswami answered the two questions. What a everyone needs to do and what a person who is about to die needs to do. And then it was all actually based around uh, hearing, chanting and remembering Krishna. And then Shukadeva Goswami is uh, explaining that your chanting has to be offenseless because unless if you're chanting offenselessly, then, you know, you're basically shooting blanks to kill uh, this this maya that disturbs us uh, you really need to chant attentively to make it potent and also do it offenselessly <clears throat> with offenses you know, we can't you know then we, we don't get the benefit as much as uh, we we would like so we'll start this is O king constant chanting of the holy name of the lord after the ways of the great authorities is a doubtless and fearless way of success for all, including those who are free from all material desires, those who are desirous of all material enjoyment, and also those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. So this constant chanting is available to everyone, whether you're a materialist or a, or a gani or a devotee, everybody should be chanting. Let's do a quick pray. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mukham Kuruti Vashalam. Pangum Namjati Grim. Yat Kirpatam Hamande Shri Guru. Deem Dharanam. Pramanam Damadam. Shri Chitaneshwaram. Hari Om. The Sat. Narayanam Namskritya. Naram Jaiva. Narutamam. Devi Msaswati Vyasam. Tato Jayam Udiriyat. Nasta Prayeshu Badreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke Bhakti Bhagavati Nistiki. Okay. So it's mentioned that there are different types of persons who desire to attain success in different varieties of pursuits. Generally, the persons who are materialists who desire to enjoy the fullest extent of material gratification, and then next to them are the transcendentalists who have attained perfect knowledge about the nature of material enjoyment and thus are aloof from such an illusory way of life. More or less, they are satisfied in themselves by self-realization. <clears throat> Above them are the devotees of the Lord. This is the highest position. 
who neither aspire to enjoy the material world nor desire to get out of it. So we not after liberation. They are after the satisfaction of the Lord, Sri Krishna. That's all we want. We just want to please the Lord, however he's pleased, whether he wants to stay here and please him or go back home and please him. That should be our attitude. In other words, the devotees of the Lord don't want anything on their personal account. If the Lord desires, the devotees can accept all sorts of material facilities. And if the Lord doesn't desire this, the devotees can leave aside all sorts of facilities, even up to the limit of salvation or liberation. Nor are they self-satisfied because they want the satisfaction of the Lord only. So we're not looking for our own satisfaction. We're looking for the satisfaction of Lord Krishna. So Shukadev Goswami recommends the transcendental chanting of the holy name of the Lord. He says, by a penseless chanting and hearing of the holy name of the Lord, one becomes acquainted with the transcendental form of the Lord. So before we were saying about chanting and hearing, now we talk about offenseless chanting and hearing. So one becomes acquainted with the transcendental form of the Lord and then with the attributes of the Lord and then with the transcendental nature of his pastimes, etc. Here it is mentioned that one should constantly chant the holy name of the Lord after hearing it from authorities. This means that hearing from the authorities is the first essential. Hearing of the holy name gradually promotes one to the stage of hearing about his form, his attributes, his pastimes, and so on. So when we are chanting, we hear the holy name, and that pulls us towards knowing Krishna more. Before we might not be interested, but that purifies us and we want to hear more about Krishna. So his pastimes and so on, and thus the necessity of the chanting of his glories develops successively. This process is recommended not only for the successful execution of devotional service, but also even for those who are materially attached. According to Sri Shukadev Goswami, this way of attaining success is an established fact, concluding not only by him, but also by all other previous acharyas. So it's been tried and tested. Therefore, there is no need of further evidence. This process is recommended not only for the progressive students in different departments of ideological success, but also for those who are already successful in the achievements as fruity workers, as philosophers, or as devotees of the Lord. So the pencil chanting is well recommended. <clears throat> then Srila Goswami, Jiva Goswami actually instructs the chanting of the holy name of the Lord should be loudly done and it should be performed offenselessly. One can deliver himself from the effects of all sins by surrendering himself unto the Lord. One can deliver himself from all offenses at the feet of the Lord by taking shelter of his holy name. So this is how important the holy name is. By chanting, we get rid of all our sins and we can deliver ourselves to go back home. But the issue is one cannot protect himself if one commits an offense at the feet of the holy name of the Lord. So who protects you if you are causing offense? The holy name of the Lord protects you from other things, but who's gonna protect you if you are causing offenses to the holy name of the Lord? In the Nectar of Devotion by Rupa Goswami, he gives 10 offenses that we should be mindful of. Because if we are causing offenses, then we should know what the offenses are. You know, where did we cause an offense? We should be aware. So Rupa Goswami mentions in the Nectar of Devotion that this is the 10 offenses that we knowingly or unknowingly might be committing. And most likely committing at least one or two of them. <clears throat> so we'll make a start. There's 10 offenses. The first offense is to blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their lives for propagating the holy name of the Lord. So what does that mean? It says that when anyone representing the Lord is insulted, then the Lord takes it as an offense, like he did with the Pandavas. He didn't, was not happy. You know, the Lord can take uh, um, offense onto himself, but not to his devotee. He will punish the offender, just like in a family, if a family member is insulted, the rest of the family will automatically feel that they have been also insulted because they are connected 
with that person. So same way, when the Lord is connected with the devotee, if you insult the devotee, then you're insulting the Lord. Simple as that. Number two, to consider the names of demigods like Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma to be equal to or independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. Now, what does that mean? That is to think that the other demigods are also Bhagwan. There's only Bhagwan. There's only only Krishna is Bhagwan with the six opulences. And also to think that the name of Krishna, the qualities and the pastimes of Krishna are different from Krishna. He is absolute and all his name, quality, pastimes are all one. And as his name, <clears throat> Krishna is actually on absolute platform. So to think that chanting the name of Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma is as good as chanting the Hare Krishna is an offense. So that's number two. Number three, three is to disobey the orders of the spiritual master. So we shouldn't think of the spiritual master as an ordinary person because he's the representative of the Supreme Lord and disobeying his instructions is an offense. I mean, it has to be bona fide spiritual master, not you know, just a spiritual master, bona fide spiritual master and disobeying him, not following his instructions is, is an offense because he's representing God Krishna. Number four, to blaspheme the Vedic scriptures or scriptures in pursuance to the Vedic version, which means that scriptures are given to us by Krishna out of his causeless mercy, Shiva Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita. These are given to us by his causeless mercy. And because, because the conditioned soul like us, we have, we have forgotten Krishna, so we shouldn't think that this literature is mundane. It is there to remind us and bring us back home. So we shouldn't take it for granted. Number five is to consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be an imagination. It's mentioned that the Lord is not imaginary, nor is his holy name. There are persons with a poor fund of knowledge who think the Lord to be an imagination of the worshiper and therefore think his holy name is also imaginary. So such a chant of the holy name of the Lord cannot achieve the desired success in the matter of chanting the holy name. So we shouldn't think the Lord is imaginary or his holy name is imaginary. If you do, then you're causing offense. And to be honest, we, you know, we should be reading the literature, trying to understand it. Then we know that it's not imaginary, it's a fact. Because it's a science and it works. So it's not somebody's imagination. Number six, to give some interpretations to the holy name of the Lord. So the holy name of the Lord is identical with the Lord himself, as mentioned. And one should understand the holy name of the Lord to be none different from him. And we shouldn't mock it or make you know something out of the chanting of the Hare Krishna. It should be as it is, as it's given to us. We should make up our own interpretations to that. Number seven, to commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name. Now, this is a, something that uh, you know easily done sometimes. So it's very important to be mindful of this. Because in the scriptures, it is said that one can be liberated from the effects of all sinful actions simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord. So we establish this, that if you, you know, if you have caused offenses in other services, or your past sins, or even sins in this life, you can neutralize them by chanting the Holy Name of the Lord. So one who takes advantage of this transcendental method and continues to commit sins on the expectation of neutralizing the effects of sins by chanting the Holy Name of the Lord is the greatest offender. So knowing, if we do things knowingly, thinking, oh, well, we'll do extra rounds, or, you know, after when we chant, the the sins will be neutralized but that then that is wrong that that is an offense so such an offender cannot purify himself by any recommended method of purification in other words one may be a sinful man before chanting the holy name of the lord which is you know we all are but after taking shelter in the holy name of the lord and becoming immune one should strictly restrain oneself from committing sinful acts with the hope that his method of chanting the holy name will give him protection. 
So you know, that's that's the one thing we should avoid that relying on the holy name to give us protection so we can carry on committing sins. Now we have this this weapon against sins. Uh, then we can apply it and we can commit sins at the same time. That is wrong. So we become free from our sinful reactions by chanting the holy name. But if we see this as a good arrangement to become free sinful reactions and keep committing sins, then try to chant and then try to chant to become free from that won't work. You can't cheat the Lord. And <clears throat> only if the offense is committed accidentally, then it's fine. But if you knowingly commit, then then you're causing problems for yourself. Right, number eight. To consider the chanting of Hare Krishna as one of the auspicious ritualistic activities which are offered in the Vedas as fruitic activities like Karam Khan. So if we think chanting of Hare Krishna is only good as performing any of the auspicious activity, then that is also an offense. There are various kinds of good works for material benefits, but the holy name and his chanting are not mere auspicious holy services. So we're not looking for material benefits by chanting the holy name. It is offense if we are looking for material happiness or material opulence from the holy name, that is an offense. Undoubtedly, there are other methods if somebody wants material opulence and they want material benefit, there are other options available, but not the holy name is not for that purpose. And since the holy name and the Lord are of one and the same identity, one should not try to bring the holy name into the service of mankind. The idea is that the Supreme Lord is the Supreme Enjoyer. He is no one's servant or order supplier. So we know we're not, use, not going to use the holy name to provide us services. Similarly, since the holy name of the Lord is identical with the Lord, one should not try to utilize the holy names for one's personal service. We should not be looking for material gain or material happiness by chanting the holy name. So that's the, that's the bottom line. So don't think if there's a special ritualistic activities that you can use for your own personal benefit. Number nine, to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name. What does that mean? It means this is the ninth offense to instruct those who are not interested in chanting the holy name of the Lord and about the transcendental nature of the holy name. So, you know, we shouldn't try to push it. When somebody says they're not interested, don't try to push it onto the name. Lord Krishna says, I think in chapter three, that don't bother with people who are not interested. Don't waste your time on them. We, we still do. I mean, there's a method to it, but we shouldn't push it so the people get rude and insult the holy name. So we shouldn't do that, you know, try to give them something they don't want. Now, because if such instruction is imparted to an unwilling audience, the act is considered to be an offense at the feet of the holy name. So it's so what's the recommendation? The recommendation is it is recommended that we chant loudly, do loud kirtan, so people can hear it, like we do Harinam. Do loud kirtan, let the person hear this transcendental sound vibration. Let the sound vibration go through the ears into the heart. They will gradually develop faith or sharda, as we call it, uh, in that person. And then they will show. So, you know, initially, I think uh, Sri Prabhupada used to say that uh, you start with the Gulab Jamun. <laughs> that, that was the first attraction. And then Kirtan. And then you tell them about Lord Krishna. You can't just go straight into telling people about the Lord, because they won't be interested. You have to go in stages. First, chant the holy name, let them hear the vibration, and then they will automatically become attracted to the holy name, and then they will want to know, and then you can instruct them. So that's the recommendation as uh, number nine <coughs> offense that we commit by not following this, this procedure. And finally, number 10, do not have complete faith in the chanting of holy name and to maintain material attachments even after understanding so many instructions on this matter. And it is also an offense to be inattentive while chanting. So the effect of chanting the holy name of the Lord is perceived by the chanter as liberation from the conception of false egoism. False egoism is exhibited by thinking oneself to be the enjoyer of the world and thinking everything in the world meant to be for the 
enjoyment of one's self only. So th that is our n initial conception. Uh, this false ego that we we get as soon as when we are born and we are touched by material energy. We, we know we have a false ego and we think everything is for us. And we, we are attached to everything. We have so many attachments. Now the whole materialistic world is moving around such four egos in, I and mine. But the factual effect of chanting the holy name is to become free from such mis misconceptions. So that is the way to show that you are advancing as we always discuss, that you become detached from uh, material things. Uh, okay, And if you're not, then and, and after all this time, all this chanting, all this listening to classes, we're still attached to material things, then that is also an offense. And then further, chanting should be done carefully and attentively to get full benefit. <clears throat> it's recommended that chanting should be done early in the morning at Brahm Murat time, ideally between 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. if possible because there is no other vibration in the atmosphere you know the atmosphere is calm <clears throat> there's no other vibration going on so we can just listen to this vibration of the holy name in that peaceful time actually it's also mentioned that anyway this this way you can develop the taste for the holy name more easily than you do in the other times of the day this everything is peaceful and then it's mentioned that every devotee who claims to be rational must guard against his offenses <clears throat> in order to quickly achieve the desired success of Krishna Prem. So if you want Krishna Prem, if you want to develop Krishna Prem, if you want to speed up the process of Krishna Prem, then we should be mindful of these offenses. Because if you're not, then really, you know, we're not benefiting. We're just wasting our time most of the time. So by trying to chant sincerely and serving the spiritual master, we may be purified of our offenses and may be able to chant purely, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. That's the method. And it's also mentioned by Sri Prabhupada that the Hare Krishna mantra is unlimitedly powerful and has the potency to immediately cleanse of all the reactions from our sinful activities from this and so many other lifetimes. So it has the power to awaken with us our original pure love for Krishna. The Hare Krishna mantra has the power to connect us with ever increasing ocean of transcendental pleasure, which is the Lord himself. On the, hand, on the other hand, one can chant the Hare Krishna mantra for many, many births and not achieve any significant results. So, you know, just because we're chanting doesn't necessarily mean we'll get results. There's a method to it, it has to be done properly if you want results, this is what Prabhupada is saying. So the answer is there is a quality to the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. If the chanting of Hare Krishna is done purely, then the results will be very quick and very great. So this is endorsed by Shri Prabhupada that if we chant purely, then the results will be very quick and very great. But if there are offenses in the chanting, then the results will be very, very limited. We'll get some result, but very, very limited results. So chanting Hare Krishna with the fancies has been compared to trying to light a fire with one hand and pouring water on it with the other hand. So imagine that you light a fire, you put it out, you light a fire, you put it out. What is the point? So the, the fire has to keep burning for results. So actually, you will not be able to light the fire in this way. There will be practically no result. Only your effort will be there, but there will be no result. So this is Shri Prabhupada is saying this. So therefore, we want to be successful in the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. It's essential that we come to the platform of offenseless chanting. Actually, in the beginning, we can chant the Hare Krishna mantra offenselessly. There will be more offenses for sure. The only way to overcome these offenses actually is by chanting. So you keep chanting, keep chanting and try to improve. Then there's three stages. So first stage is Nama Prat, offensive and impure mental state of chanting at the beginning. So the, the offenses are forgiven more easily because you're, you're new to the mission. And then you come to Nama Vyas because you have been practicing. That's the clearing stage of chanting. 
And then if you keep doing more offenseless chanting, you get shudna, pure and spiritual level of chanting. And that's what we want to achieve. That's what, that should be our target. So our target not just to chant, is to chant purely. So we have to be mindful of that fact. So most of the practitioners of Bhakti Yoga chant either with Aparad or Abhyas, Abhas. These two stages cannot give maximum protection against the onslaught of karmas and sinful reactions. So we're not going to get purified and we're not going to be protected from Maya either. So it's very important to, we should strive for pure chanting. And in fact, it's recommended that one should chant this list of the 10 offenses every morning. I tell you, it only takes two minutes, not even that, it takes one minute to chant these offenses, 10 offenses every morning. Why? Because chanting them regularly stops us committing these offenses. Because we're always aware of these offenses, we are less likely to commit them. So every morning we should chant, uh, which we should chant to ourselves these uh, 10 offenses, remind ourselves of the 10 offenses every morning. Like I said, it takes about one minute at most. Once you memorize them, you can just read them. And within a minute, um, you can get through them very, very easily. So that's all I can recommend. Um, it's, it's a long process. It, you know, it takes time, it works in stages. So please uh, try. And thank you all so much for joining this morning. Uh, it's my father-in-law's there, Mr. Sharma. Prem Prakash Prabhu, Rukmini Mataji, Jai Prabhu, Nitai Ketan Prabhu, Partha Prabhu, and Green Mataji. And I think we had, yes, uh, we had uh, another Prabhu earlier on, Avankar Prabhu, I think he may be just gone. So thank you all so much. And we'd like to hear your views on this. And we'd like to start with uh, Jai Prabhu. would like to say something, Ravi? Yeah, Hare Krishna. Um... Hare. Uh, um, I want to chant the holy name of the Lord at first hearing from higher authorities and um, chanting of the holy name of the Lord should be done loudly and without offences um, um, by uh, one, um, one can free themselves from all sinful reactions by surrendering unto the Lord and um, taking shelter of his holy name but the chanting should be done without offences. So I know you went through 10 offences. I'll just go through two or three of them. So, um, I mean, first one is to vilify a great devotee. So, um, I mean, uh, a great devotee himself probably won't commit any offences. So there's no grounds for, you know, uh, blaspheming a, de a great devotee. Um, I think one of them was um, to refuse to accept that, that the holy name of the Lord is none different from the Lord Himself. I think I've read some of that. You know, when you chant the name of the Lord, is like uh, Krishna is dancing on your tongue. Um, um, fancies uh, to commit sins deliberately, uh, deliberately whilst you're chanting. So, um, yeah, I think um, if, you know, if you're knowingly committing sin uh, while, while chanting, it's a great offence. I mean, I know sometimes people have bad habits and. It takes time to get rid of them, but um, if you, you know, still be, really, I mean, some something, you know, you have a choice whether you do them or not. But so, um, yeah, it's it's a great offence to do that. Yeah. Um. So, uh, one must, uh, I think, last one was one must have complete faith in the holy name. and I'm not become un uninterested. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave it there. I think. Yes, I mean, chanting uh, the holy name is available to everyone, including materialists and trans transcendentalists. And I think you mentioned the timings, which when ideal timing for chanting in the morning. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ravi. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, the main thing is to be uh, mindful of the offenses. And I think we can remind ourselves every day of these offenses. And it's a psychological process that when we keep reminding ourselves, we're less likely to commit those offenses. If, uh, you know, and, uh, otherwise if they're back of our mind, then you know, we won't think about them at all. But if we keep reminding ourselves, and like I said, it only takes about a minute to go through them. And once you memorize them, you know, you can do them very, very quickly. And you just, just be mindful of them all the time. It's very important because all this hard work you put in, 
day in, day out, year in, year, you know, it's a lifetime process and you might as well do it properly. Otherwise, what is the point? You waste, you know, you, you didn't enjoy your material life and you're not going to get success in, in the spiritual life, then you know, what was the point? It's wasted your life altogether. So very important. To do, if you're going to do it, then do it right. I think that's the, I think there's a song about that. So, so that's, the, that's the idea. Okay. And uh, Partha Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh Nice class. Like I, I just want to listen to all other devotees today. But I had one doubt earlier, like uh, about um, don't force the people and um, offense where it says that don't um, force the people who are not interested to get the holy name. I was not here before, but today you mentioned very nice point about that. Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yeah, it's, uh, it's I mean, like so Krishna, even Lord Krishna says that don't don't waste your time on people who are not interested. But uh, it's also mentioned by Sri Prabhupada that the devotees are more, even more merciful than the Lord himself. They, they want to help everybody. And they, they, they use the, you know, the, the, the rasgulla, whatever it takes to get people uh, to, to be attracted to the, to the, to the mission, uh, to the holy name, whatever it takes, you know, going to the town center and doing Hari Nam, you know, people might be just interested to the music. They might, the, a lot of them don't understand what we're saying, but they, they, they at least they get some attraction that they, are, they become aware and slowly that they can get curious and develop interest. And once they understand the, the Maha Mantra, then they can get interested in the philosophy as well. And it should be done in that, that process, in that, on these stages. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Uh, Rukun Madhaji? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Very nice class, chanting attentively, and because I uh, I have read somewhere that uh, the the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is not different is directly a Krishna, yeah. not different from Krishna. So we must respect Hare Krishna Mahamantra, and um, we should chant like uh, with a clear mind and. A holy mind. So it is very effective when we do this. The keeping mind in the our we keeping my in our mind Krishna first. So Krishna and holy name is no there is no different. I have read somewhere, but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So very important, Prabhuji. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh... Absolutely right. Absolutely right. When when we are chanting, we actually we are face to face. You could say with Lord Krishna. He's listening to our chanting. This, uh, Lord is non. -dip. This is how we communicate with him in the Kali Yuga uh, through his holy name because he's he's non different to his holy name. So when we are chanting, we are communicating with him. So we communicate with God, which has to be done respectfully. That's why we should be attentive as well, and there should be no offenses. <clears throat> because if you commit so many offenses, then you try to chant, then to be honest, Krishna is not interested because you, you're going around blaspheming people, you're, you're committing sinful activities and thinking the holy name will save you. Then, you know, what, what is the point uh, of that? Uh, you know, you have to, have to be making some initial effort. And then if you connect with Krishna, then he'll be more willing to listen to you. So that's it. Okay, uh, Parveen Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, uh, pranam to everyone. Um, yeah, well, it is very, very important to do offenseless chanting, but my worry is that I've been doing it for some time. I know it's not long, but I still, you know, like I try to get up early in the morning and I'll do it two days, three days, but then slip back due to family commitments or something. So I do get worried and then I do feel like that, you know, what's the point if I'm not even doing it properly? But then I think it's the bhav as well because I want to do it. So sometimes I just have to do it while I'm cooking. Well, we chant anyway when we're cooking, but then sometimes we have to make up, you know, the rounds thinking, yeah, okay, I did chanting when I was walking and stuff like that. So is there any practical tip, any 
special prayers that we can do so that like that, that's a very good point you said Prabhuji you know I did used to read the 10 offenses in the morning so that will be a good way to keep us you know it, it's it will be in our mind constantly then yes these are the offenses we have to do it properly but any other you know shalokas we can recite that can help us you know to come to that stage where yes we are getting up early in the morning three o'clock four o'clock and then yeah that's the because that's how i used to do before you know that's my priority i'm going to do it but then what i find is like i keep having lots of obstacles in life you know so are these the anarthas you know that are not letting me go like in a straight line sure. so i don't know if there is anything that i can and also one more request, because like finally now we are going to end up looking after my in-laws as well. And is there anything in Punjab? Because I want them to listen because otherwise they just talk, not, not being disrespectful to them. It's just their age. So I just want them to be engaged. Yesterday I went around to my mother-in-law because uh, I attend class. So then I said to mom, mom, you sit down as well because my mother-in-law's habit is like she keeps talking. So then I had to close my eyes and she realized that I'm not going to talk. And then she was listening. She was picking up the words Krishna, Paramatma, so which was good. So I, I don't know if you know any you know classes in Punjabi so I can like introduce them as well so they can sit learn you know because i think hindi even with hindi they they struggle so english they will not follow so if anybody knows anything in punjabi any uh, you know lectures sure. uh, because um, isha ji told me about uh, radhika kripa mataji she's so good i'm addicted to listening to her lectures now but she still speaks in english and hindi only mm -hmm. you can listen so if, yeah sorry Radhi, can you yeah, yeah. So I, I just because like I don't want my you know uh, what I've started to be affected because uh, because like I'm spending more time with them, looking after them. So I want them to use their time. So that is you know the most important motive for me because I want them to spend their last years. You know, at least they haven't done it all their life. So I want them to you know remember Krishna now. Sure. So, mom, it will be all right, but with that, it will be very, very hard work. So, but I will just say, if we do move back to Solihull, so like yourself, Prabhuji, will invite you and you can kindly come and, you know, like talk to them. So that will probably make an impact. Sure. So, so these are my worries because these, you know, all the little obstacles, uh, well, I'm looking forward to do Seva as well, you know, so I want to look after them feed them, pisad them, so that will give them mercy as well. So, but at the same time, I don't want, like, yeah, I'm not able to do, like, yesterday I, I spent a lot of time with them, so that affected my chanting and my time, reading time. <clears throat> okay, Madhuri, you can, you can, yes, we can spend time with them. Now, I was, yeah. was going to say, are they happy to, happy to have you, um, have, having you tell them about Lord Krishna? Are they, are they okay with that? Oh yeah, yes, yes, they will. They but no, they do, but because they never done it, like they never had chance, like ourselves. I think so what you need to do, you, you need to arrange for a, a Bhagavad Gita in in Punjabi or Hindi. Okay, okay. And then then you can read it to them and then explain. Yes. Yeah. Go through the Bhagavad Gita, and this way you can spend time with them and tell them about the Lord Krishna as well. In in a a class might be too too long for them. They they might just switch off after a bit. So, but if you uh, yeah. tell them go shloka by shloka and explain yeah. what the Lord is saying in Bhagavad Gita, and to be honest, everybody is interested in Bhagavad Gita. And yes, yeah, yeah. And then you just you just explain to them what you know. It's not yeah. what okay. saying, it's what the Lord is saying in Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, that's what I did yesterday. So I started telling mom. I said, "Yeah, the Lord, the Lord, Allah, Nima, me, kari diya, hai na." So, if you Allah karda hunda, to move away, ho jida. Bas pogo anda na lehi da, hai na. So I started telling, you know, and the bhakti. I said, "Mom, every yeah." Yeah, if you read the purport, yeah, tell them a shlok, read the purport, yeah, then you can explain. Then, then now. Okay. No, because I thought if I start like a little bit, like just a starter and then start reading to them so well, that was i that's what i thought but like if you think reading yeah so i can i can try that as well 
yeah, this is said by authority. And if you're saying that they think, well, you know, is it true or not? Oh, but I see. Uh, yeah. yeah. Bhagavad Gita, say, look, this is what Lord Krishna said to Arjun. And then you can try and explain it to them that this is what it means. Yeah. So okay. Somebody has to explain it as well. So you can yeah. explain it. Then you can read the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Punjabi. Uh, yeah. Punjabi or Hindi version. No, Punjabi, I can't read. <laughs> Whichever Hindi, Hindi is yeah, Hindi yeah, yeah, okay. That, yeah, thank you, Hare Krishna. Uh, and uh, yeah, so practical tip for myself as well, you know. So, yeah, for yourself, but okay. because Krishna realizes you have commitments because we are all grestas, he realized you have limited time. But if you still mm. want to do, then do 12 names of Lord Nityananda every morning as well. Okay, read the 12 names of Lord Nityananda, it's very, very useful. He, he will guide yeah. you, he will help you as well. Yeah. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Uh, Prem Prakash, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Okay, why are you sorting yourself out, uh, Prem Prakash? We'll go to Sarveshi Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna to everybody. Yeah. Well, uh, most of the things, most of most of the things have been uh, discussed. Um, I just want to say that Krishna is not different from his name, fame, activity. So, if you commit offenses to the name, that means you are committing offenses to Krishna. Well, if one chant the holy name with offense, well, it is absolutely impossible to attain the love of Godhead or Krishna. Some sins of offenses go away naturally, like small sins you commit, you can um, ch um, chant or uh, do sacrifices or do tapasya or fast, it goes away. But um, uh, committing offense to Nam, uh, to holy name, Nam, if Nam Aparad is called Nam Aparad, and it doesn't go away easily. Sure. And uh, to consider the chanting, the holy name of demigod, slash Shiva, or Brahma, they say it's equal, especially, I mean, most of the people, 90% people, they think that then it's the same because they say they're not different, but uh, it is different and they are in the um, different mode of uh, nature as well. Like uh, Lord Brahma in the mode of passion and Lord Shiva in the mode of ignorance. So people that haven't got the knowledge are they thinking, but it is, it is the people who know, they say it is offense. And it is, in, um, Offense to consider Krishna some sort of historical or material person. A lot of things people they are what Bhagavad Gita. They don't think Krishna is supreme personality of God. That he was saying that just this was a, just a historical person, a great person, uh, helped Arjuna in Mahabharat. And it is an offense. Like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Avajananti Mamudha Mano Shitan Mashitam Param Hamma Majantu Mambud Meshwaram. Friends, foolish deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature as the Supreme Lord and all that it be. That's why they say the chant, the demigod's name and Krishna's they think is the same. And the, I mean, most of us, we do. We, we chant unattentive. And what happens is like you're calling Krishna to come and then you're ignoring Krishna because you're thinking about something else. So it, it's, a, it's a big offense. And we, it's offense to get distracted. We get distracted a lot of times when chanting the Holy Lamb. Because we sometimes think, oh, I have to do this. I have to go there. Somebody is waiting for me. So therefore, I must do my run quickly and I have to be there in a certain time. And that is, that is offense. 
And one should never think his sinful activities will be forgiven by chanting the holy name. Krishna might forgive you once, but if you're going to do, take advantage of it doing again and again, it's an offense. And then it is of one to also chant without the faith. You just, you have no faith in Krishna, but you've seen somebody chanting and you started chanting. So because you, you will never, never get the good result, you never get the love of, of association of Krishna. And so it is very hard, but we, we have to try to chant attentive to get the good result and to go back to where God had that, that's our arm of life. So we have to be very careful to not to commit offenses. We do, but we, then we have to ask the Krishna to forgive us for our offenses because we do it every day because we're human beings. We are in the material world and the material world is a lot of fault. So we just can try. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Madhuri. <clears throat> so first of all, you have to be mindful of the offenses. And secondly, we should not knowingly commit offenses. We should we should be offenses will be committed. Yeah, it's it's hard to always avoid, but they shouldn't be they should not be committed knowingly. We should not you know purposefully commit offenses. Offenses will happen. This is why we have the Panch Tattva. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadashi Vasudev Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. So we chant that before doing our round that you know we, we may be committing offences. Uh, please forgive our offences and how we can chant. Properly. So you know we use the Panch Tattvas are there to help us, but we should not knowingly commit offences before and uh, and do inattentive chanting. Our chanting will be inattentive, like Mataji mentioned. We have. You know, the things we address, especially in so many commitments. Uh, but we should, we should be seen to be trying to be chanting attentively. Mind does drift off, but we should be seen to be trying to bring it back. You know, if, you, if you're just enjoying the fantasy or reflection or whatever's going through your head while you're chanting, then, then that is wrong if you're enjoying it. But something coming into your head, but you're saying, no, I need to chant. You're bringing it back. The mind is mind is child it's going to drift away you you bring it back you bring it back and then that Krishna knows that you are trying I mean mind is very powerful mind is you know is God himself so it is stronger than us but we should be seen to be trying to bring it back into chanting and then Krishna is happy with that that we are we're not just enjoying whatever the mind is doing we, we are bringing it back so thank you so much uh, Priyam Prakash Prabhu are you there? Prabhuji, sorry, can I just ask a question? Uh, like initially, I used to do Panchatattva Mantra every time I finished the round before starting the next round. I used to do that. Is that the right thing to do? And then yeah. I started just, yeah. yeah. That is every round, thing. yeah. After every round, you should do the Panchatattva Yeah, right. Yeah, thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Obviously, we have reached to a level where we, we are starting to learn that we, we have reached to a country or realm where we, we have to learn to respect the most powerful, the Supreme Lord, <laughs> when we are taking his name. So just as, as we go to China or some unknown country or some unknown realm, we need to respect. We need to respect and understand the culture over there. We can't just go there and then see, we don't know, we don't know. <laughs> and then we start doing again. The locals will guide you and then say that, okay, you need not, you shouldn't be doing it. Then do it again. <laughs> and then say that, look, I've already told you. And you're doing it again. So Krishna is somehow reminding us again and again in some form or other how to, what, what is the holy name, importance of holy name. And what need to be done to avoid offenses against it. It's not that the first time we read it, mm. it's every time we read it. And we need to know because we have forgotten. And that's the reason Krishna has arranged so much 
that we we need to understand that what are the offenses against the holy name yeah yeah so that is that is my point so today i i'm listening it that means that i forget in it already i need krishna is able to is minding me again so we need to again do that again and again every day morning to know that in which realm we are dealing and what we need to do hey krishna priority that's what my reflection is hey krishna jai thank you so much so patha prabhu is actually um he's is mentioned uh, actually is a direct message so but it's, it's a nice message so i hope you don't mind about uh, if i read it out yeah, he mentioned by his brother that initially he wasn't uh, he was only doing one round so he became to chant 3 to 4 and now 15 rounds he's doing with him uh his youngest brother is chanting with him so that is so nice so we can see that uh, it works uh chanting does work and uh, you you know it it is chanting of the all attractive person and uh, when when you are chanting his name you're associating with him and so slowly slowly you don't realize how attracted you become to him although there's a tug of war going on between uh the holy name and the mayas also pulling us at the same time this is probably why we don't make you know we don't get so much attraction because maya is also pulling us at the same time so we really need to push hard to you know to get it's like a, a rocket tank taking off from uh, from earth you know it has to go at a certain speed otherwise it can it cannot go through the i think it's 24000 miles an hour or something like that to to get through the atmosphere otherwise the atmosphere the gravity is pulling it speed like that we really need to speed ourselves up by doing a fanless chanting and follow the instructions of our spiritual master and then we can really get away from the clutches of maya so thank you so much um if anybody else wants to make any comments otherwise we'll we'll uh, go on to um do some rounds hey krishna would i make a comment of course probably sure. thank you really nice really nice discussion very really nice point guy um, class 9 kish but nice um i think there were three points i was just um thinking of so sure. the offense offense number 9 which is to um explain the glories of the holy name to um to somebody who doesn't have faith so the the key thing there is to explain the glories um we can encourage people to chant but if they don't have faith like say we're on the street we can encourage people to chant but we don't need to tell them that oh you know by chanting this we're going to go to radha and krishna and go up vrindavan and the spiritual world and all, all like that so it's important not to say the glory but of course we encourage them to we say like oh it helps you to calm your mind and that kind of thing so whatever it takes to we just don't say the intimate glory um so that's offense number 9 and then um one of the point that was raised with with a, like how do we better our chanting i think a, an additional thing is to think of the mind like a muscle so you know when you go to the gym or if you go going for a jog you don't just start running straight away you spend some time first of all warming up the body so the same thing is important for the mind i've been telling a lot of people this recently is that before you start chanting warm up your mind don't just you know you've been watching a movie and then you start chanting or you know you've been think working all day and then you just put your hand in your bee bag and expect that your mind is just going to flip and you know get get really focused on the chanting it ain't going to happen like that so you have to warm up the mind so like you said i really like what you said when you were so if it's in the morning you can chant the 10 offenses to holy name to that's kind of warming up uh one thing i recommend is to chant om three times really nice and loudly like take a deep breath om like that like a real proper and do that three times and that's like that's helping you to warm up um, proper it says that in the in uh, one purple in the bible can he says uh, chanting om like this can even um cure a deranged person like a mad person the trans- transcendental seed so like that so you do something to help warm up your mind and then you start chanting right so it's something that i'm really trying to encourage devotees to do um 
yeah the, the mind is like the, like the body you don't just do a run all of a sudden it, it, it doesn't work like that like the body just goes well wow, what's going on and then the last point i'd say is um just an interesting point i mean Narayan Keshe you said yes you should chant uh, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya the Panchatattva Mantra uh, between every uh, round I used to do that but then um, one devotee pointed out that if you listen to Prabhupada chanting Prabhupada doesn't Prabhupada just chants Hare Krishna all the way through he doesn't stop to say Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya so when I noticed that I thought okay let me try that so what I've noticed is that if I'm doing a lot of rounds in one go I find it's easier just to concentrate by just chanting Hare Krishna. So in between, I don't, and I, I used to, but I don't do that anymore because I find it sometimes breaks your concentration. So actually what I do now is I just chant fully. Like if I'm doing eight rounds at a time, then I'll just chant eight rounds without, I'll just chant a bunch of them to right at the beginning, but then afterwards I'll just chant Hare Krishna. And I find that, that just helps with the flow because when you stop to say Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, it kind of breaks your flow of the yeah. focus of the chanting Hare, uh, my, my mantra. But either way is still good. But I'm just saying, if, if you want to help with concentration, I think it's better not to. If you want to, if, if you are staying focused, if you're committing offences, definitely better. To, <laughs> to punch your dog, but punch your, so. Yeah, just some points there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kavi. Thank you for the wonderful uh, points contribution. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with the Jashi. It does take longer as well like your rounds take longer because you keep stopping you lose momentum and then you're doing the mantra and then so yeah I'd, I'd, so we have an option so we can do or not do i think uh, let's uh, let uh, the people uh, devotees can decide what they want to do um obviously the rounds will be quicker as well and you get more momentum and you can like you say you can focus better on the rounds themselves brilliant thank you so much uh, we'll do a couple of rounds. Uh, we're running out of time, but anyway, let's do a couple of rounds. We always time for chanting. And uh, uh, Rai Sureshi Mataji, would you like to start today? And sorry, Mataji, just going to say that uh, Sunday we have Deena Bandhu Prabhu and we're talking about Sri Ramananda Rai. And this is Disappearance Day on Sunday, so it's appropriate to have a class on, on Ramananda Rai as associated with Maha, Mahaprabhu. So we're doing that this Sunday, very interesting uh, class. And next Friday, we'll talk about the Lord in the heart. That's also a really nice class. Uh, so look forward to that. Thank you so much. Okay, Mataji. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vastaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamne.